Welcome back to Melbourne 22. Don't forget, if you like what you see, visit us on one of our many forms of social media or our website. It's all very fancy. It's nice. It's unusual. It's right at the bottom of the screen, just here. Thanks, Kate. Uh, or you can even hashtag Melbourne 22, as seen also on one side of the screen here or there. It seems to be the, the trend these days, doesn't it? All the full TV shows things. do it, Aaron. Get they, with the times. They do. Yep. While you were mentioning cool right there, Kate, here at Melbourne 22, <laughs> we're all about drawing attention to somewhat underestimated sports. I'm, of course, talking about lawn bowls. Have you ever played? I, I've played a few times. Had I a few roll-ups? I have, yes. Yeah? <laughs> shoes on or shoes off? Off, of course off. That's how you know how serious you are. So the, the shoes off people, obviously just a bit of casual fun there and, <laughs> and whatnot. Our lovely co-hosts, Scott and Kate, headed out to a few clubs to be shown a thing or two. Let's take a look. Hi guys, it's Scott Reed and Kate Garrard and we're down here at the Port Melbourne Bowling Club. That's lawn bowls, not to be mistaken with tampon bowling or anything like that, right? Exactly, exactly. Have you played? I've played but it was a very long time ago and it was only once and I was quite drunk, I've got to say. You better watch out. <laughs> Alright. So if she beats me, that's the reason why. <laughs> yes, let's check it out. Rules are you have you have teams of four, and the the person whose turn it is to bowl first bowls the jack. If you're if you're playing with men or kitty, if you're playing with ladies, it's exactly the same thing. Then you roll that down. Each time you play, you four people in the team. You each have two bowls each, and you take it in turns to bowl. And whoever gets the most bowls closest to that jack or kitty, you get that score. We're here with Jim at Port Melbourne Bowls Club and he's about to show us some tips on how to bowl properly. But first, Jim, how long have you been playing bowls? Uh, about five years. Five years. And how long do you practice? Like, how many times a week? Uh, well, we play, uh, play pennant twice a week, Tuesdays and Saturdays. What does that mean? It means it's a competition. Uh -huh. yeah. All right. Shall you show us? Let's What's get started. What's the first started. thing we need to do? The well, white ball, the jack. Yeah, well, you want to roll the jack? All right, let's Go for do it. Go Scott. <laughs> Kate has got the shot, has got two shots, OK? Now, if she bowls back again and she gets another two shots, it's four that you've got, you've got zero, all right? Oh well, Understand congratulations. <laughs> Sorry, Scott. <laughs> we'll get you next time. <laughs> okay, it's decided, I'm in. I can just see it now, Kate Lawn Bowls extraordinaire. Well, you're an easy convert. Don't get too ahead of yourself. You <laughs> need to be able to play dream. the game first. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, while you're sitting there dreaming, I'm going to be a gracious host and introduce our studio guest, Paul Winslow from Lawn Bowls Victoria. Paul, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. And what's your involvement with Bowls Victoria? Um, I'm actually the Marketing, IT and Publications Manager, which is a very long drawn out job title. <laughs> so I publish our magazine, look after our website, our social media, um, some of our corporate partnerships and a bit of marketing as well. Now, iconically, Lawn Bowls has always been a sport that's viewed as something for the elderly. How do you these days encourage all of the up and coming young players to come through? Uh, it's amazing actually that there's so many successful young players at the moment. Um, the Australian Open singles champions at the moment are both Victorians uh, and they're about 20, 21 years old. Wow. Um, and a lot of the, there's a lot of real amazing young kids coming through and winning a lot of tournaments at the moment. So it's kind of, you do have that demographic obviously and a lot of people you know in retirement play seven days a week pretty much. Um, but there's a real sort of young dynamic to the game at the moment as well. And so I hear that some of the Jackaroos are over in Hong Kong at the moment competing. Do you know how that's going? Have you heard about their progress? Um, they haven't actually started yet. Um, I've just had an email from them in, while I was waiting in the green room, actually. So uh, Carla <laughs> Rogers and Barry Lester, who are two of Victoria's finest, um, are out there. Barry won uh, the singles and the pairs last year, so he's uh, out there trying to defend his titles. 
Uh, Barry Less is actually uh, a mutual friend of one of my other friends, actually, and so you have heard he's actually over there at the moment, and uh, we we wish those guys all the best over there uh, as well. So, uh, mate, if people want to get involved in the sport, is there somewhere they can go or somewhere they can look to get that information? Absolutely. The best uh, thing to do is go onto the Bowls Victoria website, which is bowlsvic.org.au. Uh, we've got a club finder function on there, so you can basically go in, type in your postcode and find out all the bowls clubs that are close to you. And then there's a link to their website and you can find out when they've got social bowls on and basically contact the club and find out what they've got going for new bowlers. Okay. Just with my theme today right. of changing up the rules, like, you know, for November, I'd <laughs> like to change up the rules for some lawn bowls. <laughs> I think that to be able to measure the distance between the little white one, what's the little white one called? The jack. The jack. Yes, the jack and the, the bigger ones. The <laughs> I think it's really good to use um, like body body parts to measure. I like to measure like, is it a finger? Is it a hand? Is it a, a cage? Leg? I, yeah. have had, I have had a long stretched out body stretch that I had to do once to try and prove that I was a bit closer. Here's the thing about rules, Kate. Yeah. Uh, lawn bowls has been around for quite some time. Yeah. Uh, would you be able to enlighten us on how long lawn bowls has been around for? Like as a rough guesstimate, I know I'm putting you on the spot. Here, yeah, but... I mean there were references to it in Shakespeare as far back as then. Um, and actually, uh, yeah, in the UK they played it sort of back in the sort of 12, 1300s. There's very early references to it. Um, that is Melbourne so cool. Bowls Club was the first one. Uh, in Victoria, it's about 1860. Um, so it's been around in uh, Australia for quite some time, and, and like I say, going back into past Shakespeare. All right, well, every reason to get involved. It's been around for ages. It's a fantastic sport and a lot of fun to just get out there and be social with your friends. So thank you so much for joining us here today. Uh, we've had an uh, absolute ball having you in the studio, pardon the pun. <laughs> uh, good luck to the guys uh, in the tournament as well and for 2014. Absolutely. Now, I hear you guys have been dishing out history lessons here on Melbourne 22. Oh, look, it's all about learning and knowledge. Uh, I do love these history lessons, Kate. This week... It's on a relatively new Melbourne icon. <laughs> no, it's not me. <laughs> uh, I wonder uh, why it could be, uh, I wonder what it could be, I wonder why it, it, we could be talking about this. I, I wonder a lot of things, but maybe we should just look into the distance mm. and stroke our imaginary beards. Situated in South Bank with ideal 360 degree views of the great, the wonderful city of Melbourne is the Eureka Tower. It stands at 300 metres tall, aka 88 storeys, aka 975 feet, and is the tallest residential tower in the Southern Hemisphere. Construction began in August 2002 and finished in June 2006, and it was open to the plebs, I mean the public, in October 2006. There are 3,680 steps, 52,000 square metres of windows, 13 elevators, and it weighs 200,000 tonne. Not only is it the tallest residential tower in the Southern Hemisphere, but it also has the fastest lifts, travelling at 9 metres per second, way faster than this boat. The blue of the tower represents the diggers during the Eureka Stockade. And for those playing at home, it's also where the tower got its name. The red stripe represents the bloodshed, and the top 10 floor windows that are plated with 24 karat gold, aka the golden crown, represents the gold fields. Well, that's about it, kids. Stay tuned for some more History of Melbourne. Coming up next, we spend 60 seconds with a psychologist and we have the quarters performing in the studio. 